Welcome to Lecture Online and here for one more example on how to use Newton's method let's take a more unconventional type of function let's use a sine function see if it works just as well for a sine function and it should all right again we pick a sample point and by with that sample point we can say that the second point x sub 2 which is equal to the sample point minus the function evaluated at the sample point divided by the derivative of the function evaluated at the sample point so here we have a sine function we can see that there's an infinite number of roots of course typically we would limit the function maybe between 0 and 2 pi doesn't matter but then um, just let's pick up any point let's pick the point pi over 8 which is 45 degrees and so we'll evaluate the function at that location and the derivative of that location you can see that if we make a tangent line we'll pick it we'll end up at a point that's closer to the um, the origin of course we have a we have a root right here, we have a root right there, but if we pick this point, you can see that we'll probably zero in on the root x equals zero. So let's see if that works. Well, to do that, of course, we need to find the, um, the derivative of the function as well. So we can say that f of x is equal to 4 times the sine of x, and then the derivative f prime of x is equal to the derivative of sine is the cosine, so it would be 4 times the cosine of x. Okay. So let's go ahead and see if we can make this work. Our first point, x sub 1, is going to be pi over 8. So that means that the second point, x sub 2, is equal to pi divided by 8 minus the function evaluated at x sub 1. So what is the sine of x evaluated at x sub 1 equal to? I mean, uh, yeah, x sub 1, which is pi over 8. So we have the function evaluated at x equals pi over 8 is equal to now notice that the pi rate is 45 degrees, the sine of 45 degrees would be 0.707. So 0 0.707, and that goes in here, 0 0.707. And then we divide that by the derivative evaluated at that location. So let's see here. So 0 0.707, now we have f prime of x equals pi over 8. Oh, one more thing. I forgot the 4, didn't I? I have to multiply times 4. So times 4. Okay, so take the whole thing, multiply times 4. And what about the derivative? Um, when we plug in x equals pi over 8 for the derivative, that's the cosine of x. Well, we'll remember that the cosine of 45 degrees also is 0 0.707, so that would be equal to 0 0.707 times 4. Okay, that goes in the denominator, 0 0.707 times 4. You can see already that that would be equal to 1 because the numerator and the denominator is the same. So pi divided by 8. So we have um, second function pi divided by 8 minus 1. So that would be x sub 2 is equal to pi divided by 8 minus 1. So minus 1 equals, and so we have this is equal to minus 0 0.607. All right, now that would be our second point. And oh, it looks like that actually brings us farther away from the root than our first point, but not to panic. I still think this should work. All right, let's find our third point. x sub 3 is equal to x sub 2 minus the function evaluated at x sub 2 divided by the derivative evaluated at x sub 2. All right, so x sub 2, we now see that's minus 0 0.607, and now we're going to sub subtract from that, that ratio. So we're going to evaluate the function um, at x equals minus 0 0.607 and let's see what that equals so we take the sine of that of course you have to put your calculator in radian mode when you do this not in degree mode in radian mode and I think I have mine in radian mode there it is so take the sine of that and times 4 that's minus 2.283 minus 2.283 and now we have the derivative x equals minus 0 0.607. All right, so now we take the cosine, so 0 0.607, make that minus and negative, and then we take the cosine of that, and we multiply that times 4, and we get a positive 3.285. All right, so let's plug those numbers in and see what we get. So on the numerator, we get a minus 2.2. 283 in the denominator I get a plus 
3.285. Now notice that this negative will cancel out that negative, will make that a positive. So it's this number add and add to that, that right there. So 2.283 divided by 3.285. And we add that to the negative, that's like subtract, 0.607 equals, ah, now we get something that's close to the root. X sub 3 is equal to 0 0.088. So you can see that on the third point, X sub 3, we're getting to be very close to our actual root. Let's try one more time and see what happens the fourth time. So now we can say that X sub 4 equals X sub 3 minus the function evaluated at X sub 3 divided by the derivative of the function evaluated at X sub 3. So that gives us 0 0.088 minus, let's evaluate now our function at x sub 3. So here's our function, evaluate that for 0 0.088. So take the sign of that, times 4 equals, and it's 0 0.351. 0 0.351 in the numerator. Let's do the same for the denominator, so we have 0 0.088. Let's take the cosine of that and times 4. And we get 3.985. 3.985. And let's see what that is equal to. So point, point 0.351 divided by 3.985. We subtract that from 0 0.088 equals, oh, and look at that. This is equal to 0 0.00008. Negative, it's actually negative, but hey, who cares? We're so close to our root, by now we should realize the root must be zero. And of course, we already know that the root will be zero. So doing this about three times, and we zeroed in right onto the first root. So one more thing here, what is really interesting in this example is that when we picked our first point, and what did we do our first point? We picked it as pi over 8. So let's see what pi over 8 is equal to. So we take the number pi and we divide by 8. So our first point, whoop, let's try this again. Pi divided by 8 equals. So my first point, x sub 1, which is equal to pi divided by 8, which is equal to 0 0.393, rounded off to three decimal places. And then my second point, x sub 2, ended up being farther away from the root than my first point. So let me um, maybe draw this a little bit more accurate. So let me get rid of that. So what in essence happened is I was far enough up here that my slope carried me to a point farther away from the root that I'm trying to find than my first point was at. So this is how far my first point was away from the root. This is how far my second point was away from the root. So, when I then drop down in here and pick my third point right here, then what happened is the slope here was such that then the third time I came to a point that was now closer to the root than my first point. And that's what happened when I found my x sub 3. Notice how close I got to the root. And so, don't panic. If your second point appears to be farther away from the root than your first point, you may say, oh, this is not working. Don't worry, give it a few more tries, go to the next point, go to the next point, and eventually it'll be such that the, that the method will zero you right in onto the root. So, and you can see that this works on any function, sine function, regular function, you name it, it should work on any function. That's how we do that.